Driving on the Catalina Highway is similar to embarking on a cross-continental journey in less than 30 miles. It's a great place, really close to be able to uh, experience some, some different uh, scenic views in the desert. You get to see a lot of cool things, and if you're quiet enough, you get to see some animals and stuff, so it's really cool. This is a North American hotspot of biological diversity and geological immensity. Mount Lemmon is one of our region's sky islands, an oasis of green in a desert sea thanks to dramatic gains in elevation and precipitation. With elevation, you get a drop in temperature and you get an increase in rainfall and precipitation. So Tucson gets about 12 inches of rain a year and the top of Mount Lemmon gets about 30 inches of rain at about 9,000 feet. My name is Dr. Kevin Bonine. I'm a faculty member at the University of Arizona in the College of Science. I do a lot of teaching in ecology and evolutionary biology and do education outreach. And these conditions, he says, create an ideal location for learning and amazement. It's an ever-changing environment thanks to the different life zones you can find in a relatively short distance. Here we are at about 4,500 feet, Molino Campground at Molino Basin. And you can see that the predominant vegetation here is grass with a few oaks interspersed. And we have lots of different species of oak and they exist in different microhabitats on the mountain. We've got some prickly pear cactus that still uh, hang out here and do okay in this colder environment. But we've lost our saguaros. Uh, we've lost a bunch of the species that are down in the Sonoran Desert. Welcome to the Mount Lemmon Science Tour. Let's talk. About a mobile app from the temperature. University of Arizona College of Science can also take you on a guided tour as you make your way up the mountain. It addresses topics such as water, fire, and some of the other outstanding features. It all starts with the rocks. As you travel up, you're seeing amazing layers of rocks in the road cuts, and you're seeing ridges and mountains on every horizon formed by rocks and you're seeing across the wide, flat Tucson basin filled with rocks. All these rocks tell a story, the story of how this place came to be. One of the most uh, popular places to stop on the Mount Lemmon Highway is uh, Windy Point, and it's one of the stops that's recommended in the Sky Island Mount Lemmon Science app. So this is a place where you can see the geology, you can have beautiful vistas of the landscape, and you really get a sense for these sky islands in a desert sea. I didn't really know what to expect. I've been in mountains prior to this, the Rockies, the Smokies, but it's a different terrain. It, it changes every time we go around another curve. I'm really enjoying this scenery and wanting to climb out there. <laughs> it's, um, it's a nice view from up here. It's just a beautiful highway, and my father conjectured that it, the engineers who put it in wanted to take advantage of Windy Point, and so that they added a few extra miles in making that long loop, but it was worth it. For Tucson resident Mary Ellen Barnes, the Catalina Highway is akin to a gigantic backyard full of fascinating memories at different oh altitudes. Barnes grew up in the 1940s between Tucson and Summerhaven at the top of the mountain, and she even learned to drive on the Catalina Highway. Well, it was absolutely wonderful. We had the freedom of roaming all over the mountain or riding all over, hiking. Although we did work in the store, starting when I was 12, in the old O'Neill store, I remember. I probably wasn't a very good um, salesperson because I would eat a candy bar now and then. She's the author of various books, including The Road to Mount Lemon, which addresses this region's rich attributes and her family's connection to the land. Her father was Tony Zimmerman, one of the pioneer developers there last century. My father had the store and the inn, and he was also a realtor, and then he ran a sawmill and uh, supplied lumber for people on the mountain, plus for people in Tucson. Old Tucson had a lot of lumber from Mount Lemmon in it. Construction of the highway began in 1933 and would last 17 years. A prison camp provided labor for several years, but it was later converted to a camp for interned Japanese Americans during World War II. 
they were also forced to toil on the project. This area is steeped in history and experiences, including more recent events such as fire. Soon, on the steep slopes to your left, you'll see the trunks of dead trees, trees that died in the massive Aspen fire of 2003. And the forest is only beginning to grow back. That same fire also destroyed much of the town of Summerhaven on Mount Lemmon. Fire is a big part of the history of these sky islands in the southwest. The interaction between climate, fire suppression, and natural fuels buildups, as well as people living in places that are frequented by fire, uh, led to some interesting dynamics a little over a decade ago. When I bring students up here on field trips and I tell them that basically it's like driving from the Mexican border to southern Canada, they're thankful that they don't have to sit in a van for that long. Uh, but they're really surprised at what's right in their backyard and how different the, the vegetation and the landscape is up here. We're approaching the end of our tour now. Thanks for traveling with us on the Mount Lemmon Science Tour. We hope that you'll go for a hike in the Catalinas or the Sonoran Desert or both to experience the sights and sounds and wonders of our Sky Islands region. <laughs>